I watched it. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a very well made movie, very entertaining from beginning to end. What's up, everybody? I'm Rick. And I'm Anna, and welcome to our review of the 1934 movie It Happened One Night. For those of you who are new here, hi, welcome, please subscribe to our channel, which is dedicated to our bucket list of 101 goals and dreams that we hope to accomplish in our lifetime. And one of those goals for us is to watch every movie nominated at the Academy Awards for Best Picture from 1927 to 2028. That is 101 years of Academy Awards Best Picture nominees and their respective winners. Currently, we are at 1934, which is the seventh Academy Award year, but it's the eighth year that we have watched and that we are reviewing because we've also done 2019. To this day, we have watched 55 movies and we have discussed one unavailable movie for us, unavailable, and one lost movie. So for those of you who don't know, the way these reviews go is that the first part will be a spoiler-free discussion about the movie which means that we will give our top level appreciation on the movie without spoiling the story so you don't have to worry if you haven't watched the movie we're not gonna spoil it for you and the second part of the review will be spoiler filled which means that we will deep dive into certain scenes certain elements of the movie that picked our interest while spoiling the story Full of spoilers. Full of spoilers. Gonna be plenty of spoilers, but don't worry. If you don't want to get spoiled, we will warn you before we get to that part. And at that point, you can go to the timestamp in the description box below. That will take you directly to the end of this video where we do the ranking. Rank. We will rank all the nominated movies for Best Picture at the Academy Awards of 1934. And with this being actually the last movie on the list, or at least the last available one to us, that means that at the end of this video, the ranking of 1934 will be complete. Will it though? We're gonna see. Will be white complete parade at as some of point. now. Yeah. <laughs> but before we get to all of that, Rick, let us get started with the classic section of trivia information. Yeah. Oh, yes, it's a classic. Information about the movie. Okay, hit me. What is the movie we watched? It Happened One Night is a Columbia Pictures pre-code romantic comedy film came out on February 22nd, 1934. It is based on the 1933 short story Night Bus by uh, Samuel Hopkins Adams. The movie was directed by Frank Capra, who also directed another movie that we have watched and reviewed on this channel. Do you Seven remember which one? Seven, was it? No, no. Lady oh. for a Day. Lady for a Day? Yes. Really? Movie stars Clark Gable as Peter Warren, Claudette Colbert as Ellen or Ellie Andrews. She's everywhere, huh? Oh my god, yes. Only this year we've seen her in three movies. Yeah. So, well, it's a big year for her. Movie also stars Walter Cannelly as Alexander Andrews and Jameson Thomas as King Wesley. What a name, huh? Well, King is in, uh, like... Quotation, so I'm guessing it wasn't it's his actual really his name, name. Oh, okay. it's just what wondering. he was called. Yeah. <laughs> Movie was an astonishing success. Ooh, what they won. It was nominated for five Academy Awards. First of all, Best Picture, or as it was known back then, Outstanding Production, uh, which is why we have watched it and we are reviewing it on this channel, which it won. Mm -hmm. So as we mentioned, it is the winner of Best Picture of 1934. But it was also nominated for Best Actress in a Leading Role, for Claudette Colbert, which is also one. Oh. Best actor in a leading role for Clark Gable, which it also won. Oh, wow. Best director for Frank Capra. Which it won. Which it also mm -hmm. won. It's and a raffle. Best writing adaptation for Robert Riskin, which it also won. Everything. Everything. Five nominations, five wins. So here's where things get interesting, mm -hmm. right? To this day, it Happened One Night is one of the only three movies to ever win the top five Academy Awards. All of them. So when you say top five, so best picture, best director, best actor, best actress, and? And uh, best uh, writing. Oh, okay. The other two movies on the list, for those of you who are curious, are One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest and Silence of the Lambs. It is also on a short list of movies 
to have won all the awards that it was nominated for, whichever those were, and the only one to have managed both of those things. But I mean, all the awards you're nominated for, that yeah. can't be that hard if you're nominated for one. So the list only includes movies that have been nominated for at least two awards. Moving on now, the movie, while it being such a great success in the end, didn't start off like that. Not mm -hmm. at all. So let me tell you a few interesting anecdotes from the making of this movie. First of all, uh, Gable and Colbert were not the first actors to be considered for the, the main roles. In fact, seven other actresses either turned down the role or were unavailable for the role before Colbert was asked to play the part. Mm -hmm. When Colbert was offered the, the role, initially she refused it. After long persuasions, she accepted Granted that her salary be doubled yeah. to $50,000. That, that's what I was thinking. Long persuasion is uh, more money. And on the condition that her part would be done, filmed, in four weeks so that she can take her vacation. Oh. Gable's part also had two other considerations, two other actors that were considered before he actually took the role. Even then, both Gable and Colbert were heavily dissatisfied with the script and the making of the movie. When her part was done filming, Colbert famously said to a friend of hers that she has just finished the worst picture she ever made. Really? Yes. And she won an award for it, huh? I'm glad you mentioned that because actually she was so unhappy with the picture that she didn't attend the ceremony even though she was nominated for the award. When she won, someone had to go get her from the train station when she was about to leave on a trip to bring her to the awards. The, the awards so that she could uh, get her, her award. And she delivered the speech in a, a travel suit. Really? Yes. Moreover, the production company itself, Columbia Pictures, had very little expectations from this movie. It made very little efforts to promote it, which caused the movie to have a very slow start at the box office. Word of mouth, word of mouth. However, exactly, when word of mouth got out and spread around, the sales, the ticket sales exploded and it was a surprise for everyone, basically, how successful this film ended up being. However, the critics' reviews on the movie were always good from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Today, the movie holds a 98% approval rate on Rotten Tomatoes and the critics' consensus on the movie, on the, the same website, on Rotten Tomatoes, says It Happened One Night remains unsurpassed by the countless romantic comedies it has inspired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see uh, like the kind of movie it inspired, definitely. So there are a lot of things that this movie is uh, recognized for. The American Film Institute put it on its list of 100 years, 100 movies, 100 laughs, 100 passions. And it is on a short top 10 list of romantic comedy films. Later on, it was adapted also in a radio play where Colbert and Gable played their, their parts again? once again. I thought she yes. did it. Well, I guess she changed her mind when she yeah. saw how successful it was. <laughs> when she got offered more money. Oh, yeah, more or persuasion. That. Or that. And one last fun fact piece of information. It is among the last uh, romantic comedies pre-code movies made before the code was imposed. Yeah. That being said, that is about everything that I had to say. There's a lot of information on this movie, as you could tell. So let us not drag it too long and move on to the spoiler-free section. So, Rick, yeah? what did you think of this movie when you watched it, before you heard everything that I had to say <laughs> in the trivia section? Are you insinuating that I will be influenced by <laughs> the words of uh, critics a hundred years ago? I, I like this movie. Yeah, uh, I enjoyed it. You know, to me, there's a certain, and I guess maybe it's because we've, I've seen so many romantic comedies since, there's a certain dissonance between how much I like this movie and how much it is praised. Because I watched it, I enjoyed it, I thought it was a very well-made movie, very entertaining from beginning to end. But then they're saying, like, this movie, you know, it sliced bread, uh, or you were telling me... Uh, as I was listening to you, I was like, oh, really? Wow. All these awards, like, everything. I, I actually, I was thinking the same, you know? Mm -hmm. When I was watching it, I was entertained all the way through. But I never thought that this movie was actually this relevant 
mm. both historically and uh, like for the for the genre because yeah. as they say apparently it inspired a lot so of romantic many, comedies right and i guess that's where you know our perception is twisted because we've seen probably a lot of romantic comedies that were inspired by that so it doesn't seem as like groundbreaking exactly uh, in yeah. hindsight yeah uh, so that's that's interesting so let us talk more specifically a little bit about the story so what did you think of that i love the story i thought like it's very simple you know they managed to get you with a premise uh, and a goal and you know what's happening this character wants to do this and this character has this motivation and then let's go from there yeah i think that that's one of the key to success when it comes to comedies is that the story has to be easy to deliver because if you want to play around with like dialogue with uh like comedic uh, situ- like situations you have to have a fairly simple story to begin with that will allow you, allow you to like do all of this uh, yeah. juggle around mm-hmm. it right so it works better in my opinion and this movie manages to do that it takes a simple story and like puts flowers all around to make you laugh to make you like smile all the time so it's it's great from yeah, this no, point of view yeah i love the story what about the performances so as we mentioned the actors were not happy at all to be in this movie yeah well, about their <laughs> dialogue and everything the script i'm surprised they were not happy because like listening to their uh, banter like the two of them first of all their chemistry i thought was really good and the dialogue i thought was really good you know and the I, way they delivered it too i i thought so too so <laughs> Apparently, some of the dialogue was changed after they started working on the on the movie. But even so, I feel like the script is is well it's done. Solid, it's solid, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't leave and say I just finished filming the worst movie. Me know? neither. I don't. Th- I wouldn't yeah. think so. Yeah. As for the look and the sound of the movie, I for one thought it just it looked great. It sounded good. Um, I want to highlight the outdoor scenes. I thought like... Oh, that's true. They you were mentioned it even really we well were. filmed. I don't know what happened. Maybe they had a fancy camera. Maybe it was just the Blu-ray we were watching. But like the image was so crisp. Usually outdoor, there's kind of a blur. So uh, I, I did not mention that because the <laughs> trivia section was already getting really long. But the movie was restored. Oh, actually, okay. mm-hmm. I don't remember exactly when, but it was restored uh, quite recently. Mm-hmm. So maybe because I was wondering, why. like, is it the Blu-ray they retouched it? Is it's a remaster, or is it like back then they had such a but crisp image? It, it was restored, like it wasn't remade or anything mm-hmm. like this. So maybe that's what it looked like before it got deteriorated over time. Yeah, um, it looked good. It looked good. Yeah, mm-hmm. I thought so too. And I also really liked the inside shots. I felt like they really managed to give a really good angle on those like cramped spaces. Is there anything in particular that you would like to talk about? Uh, No, not really. Again, you know, when listening to what I had to say at the beginning about how I'm surprised it was so loved. It doesn't mean I don't love the movie. I love that movie. I thought it was great. But uh, the praise were so big. I was like, oh. I thought so too. I, you know, there's not much to really talk about Mm -hmm. unless you get into specific scenes. Because as we said, the movie is quite simple. The story is quite simple. It's a good comedy. You get a good laugh out of it. And to me, that's, that's... Pretty much what it was about. Yeah, I um, recommend it. Go watch it. Yeah, I definitely recommend it too. It stands on its own with or without the awards and the praises and everything yeah. else. <laughs> it's still a good movie to watch. So yeah, don't miss it. I think with this we can conclude our spoiler-free section. And before we move on to the spoiler field section, don't forget if you don't want to get spoiled, you can get to the timestamp in the description box below and go directly to the end of this movie where we do the ranking of all the movies nominated for Best Picture at the Academy Awards in 1934. And for those of you who have either seen the movie or don't mind getting spoiled, let us move on to the spoiler field section. So let us start this section the way we always do. I will give you a short synopsis of the movie. A spoiled heiress running away from her family is helped by a man who is actually a reporter in need of a story. That is it. Yeah, pretty much it. It is the beginning and the middle, pretty much also the end of the story. (laughs) So before we talk about the scenes that interested us in particular, there are a couple of scenes that I would like to mention uh, to give some more interesting information about the movie, because Mm -hmm. I really like this information about the movie, right? So you know the scene where Colbert's character is supposed to get on the side of the road and raise her 
skirt to stop a, a, car, a yeah. car to get to like a to hitchhike, right? Mm -hmm. So apparently Colbert refused to uh, do that scene uh, because she said it is very unladylike. But the scene was in the movie, right? So they it's someone else's were life. going to hire a double, a body double. However, when Colbert saw the body double, she enraged came on, on set and said, get her out of here, that is not my leg. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. In and the end, she accepted to play the part. Yeah. She was very unhappy about it. <laughs> That's pretty cold. Post oh, yeah. cold, you know, she she wouldn't have to show her leg. Oh yeah, exactly, exactly. Another interesting information. So we mentioned how this movie was an inspiration to a lot of uh, romantic comedies that came after. But romantic comedies is not the only genre that this movie inspired. There are three particular elements in this movie. One of them is one of the secondary characters, Oscar Shapley, who is the annoying passenger on the bus. Yeah. In the scenes, he keeps calling Peter Doc. The second element is when Peter tries to get rid of him by scaring him into thinking this was uh, like a mafia plan or yeah. something like this. He mentions a fictional character named Bugs Dooley. Bugs Bunny? The third scene is Bugs one scene Bunny. in the movie They eat carrots In which they eat carrots and Peter talks while eating carrots So these three elements were confirmed by one of the co-creators of Bugs Bunny as Serving as, as an inspiration, inspiration oh, for Bugs really? Bunny yeah. Yes That being said, that is what I had to say Those were the, the interesting elements So where, where would you like to start <laughs> this conversation? I'd like to start with uh, that time Bugs Bunny and uh, Daffy <laughs> were you know, and kind of a feud. No, but seriously, um, I really enjoyed that one scene when the detective come in their cabin because they're looking for her, you know, her father hired them. And she's kind of hiding, you know, like brushing her hair. And the journalist is there. And they get into this fake argument between the two of them. And the whole time, it was not only funny, well acted, uh, but like you could feel the chemistry between the two of them uh, you could feel also like how much they were becoming at that point the friends or acquaintances they were having fun with each other uh, I really like yeah that I thought so too that was a really good scene yeah. I thought so mm -hmm. one scene that comes to mind uh, particularly to me is that scene where she misses the bus when the bus does one a stop in like a small station, she arrogantly says that the bus will wait for her. Yeah. Goes to have a breakfast at a fancy hotel in town. But then when she gets back, the bus was Left. gone, mm. obviously. And uh, Peter also supposedly missed the bus. He was waiting for her over yeah. there. Mm. I thought that was really nice played on both parts. Like her being so genuinely clueless of the fact that the bus will not wait for you, no matter who you are. Yeah, everything doesn't revolve around you. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. And also on his part, uh, playing the tough guy, but at the same time, you can obviously kind of tell that he, he cares. cares and he missed the bus on purpose. Mm. Uh, so I thought that was really, a really well acted scene, in my opinion. Mm. One thing, like we've given a lot of praises, I would have liked at the end, uh, if we can talk in terms of criticism at the end to have some kind of reunion you know we kind of see it off screen you know right. we see them in the, their cabin and they're making the walls of Jericho fall <laughs> but like we never get that reunion between the moment where like they're not talking to each other and the moment uh, at the end of the movie where we don't actually see the actors uh, so I would have liked at least one scene you yeah know, that, that would have been interesting I, I would have liked for the scene of her running away from her own wedding uh -huh. to maybe be given a little bit more context or be developed a little bit more. Yeah. But like you said, maybe her running away and actually going to him would have been And saying, because she doesn't say anything, you know, yeah. she just runs away and then the movie ends with them uh, getting married, you know, presumably. Right. So... What did you think particularly about Walter's char character, um, Alexander, Alexander Andrews, the father? He was interesting, you know, like at the beginning, you kind of think that like it's an overbearing dad who, you know, doesn't let uh, his daughter do anything. 
But then at the end of the movie, he's the one who like pushes her to leave her wedding and go with this other guy. And a guy who doesn't have any money, you know. I thought that would also be a problem. It's like, oh, are you going to marry this uh, nobody? But no, he wants that for her. And I feel like maybe in the end, she just misunderstood him the whole time. Yeah, I, I thought so too. I really like that. I like that at first you feel like he's, you know, kind of a wrong side of this, mm-hmm. you know, of this story. Like, oh, she's in love with someone and he's trying to stop her from being with him. But at the end, you realize that, no, he was a caring father who saw that that guy was not... He was only after the money. Yeah, Yeah. he was only after the money and he was was not the right one for for Mm -hmm. his daughter. And maybe he also saw that his daughter was more pushed into this direction, into marrying that guy, just uh, to do it in his spite. Yeah, well, he he says so, you know, you're only marrying him because I told you not to. Yeah, exactly. I, I really like his character arc. His character's arc. We, we don't see him that much. We see him in the beginning and then at the end. And just a couple of scenes between. between. It's but kind of sad at the end though. Like he, he gets drunk. I'm guessing he lost a lot of money. That's why he's drinking. But like that was a bit of a depressing end for I thought him. he was yeah. just sad. Sad that uh, his daughter left? Sad that... Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Because he seemed pretty okay with it when she left the wedding so maybe I'm he guessing... was maybe he was happy maybe he was just drinking to be happy they don't really give a context they don't give a context but he gets a, a phone call with the king about how you know i gave you a hundred thousand dollars leave me alone now yeah and so i was thinking he's crying because he just lost a lot of money out of this uh, whole uh, ordeal i uh, i don't know hmm. it's possible they don't really mention that yeah i i took it as just that was his character you know yeah he's just drinking drinking. just drinking Mm. yeah i didn't really think much beyond it is there anything else that you would like to mention no no uh, again i like this movie and uh... yeah i think i would like to mention once more how like smartly the comedy is Mm. and i don't think we actually uh, accentuated that much i feel like the the scenes both the scenes and the dialogue are very smartly done yeah you know Mm -hmm. like it's a comedy that's not just you know, silly. It's actually, it's smart comedy, which I really enjoy. So. No, definitely. Again, the dialogue to me is uh, one of the highlights and the way it's delivered by the main actors is also... Yeah, it's, uh, it's, really, mm. it's really crisp. I thought there was definitely an element that we should mention. Mm. But that being said, I think this is it for the review. Let us move on to the ranking section. So we mentioned before, lots of movie this year, lots of movie on this list, but right now we are at the last one. So let us see what the list looks like as of now. At number 10, here comes the Navy. At number 9, One Night of Love. At number 8, Flirtation Walk. At number 7, Viva Via. At number 6, Cleopatra. At number 5, The House of Rothschild. At number 4, The Barrett's of Wimpole Street. At number 3, The Gay Divorcee. At number 2, Imitation of Life at number one, The Thin Man, with the mention that we have also discussed the movie The White Parade, but as we have not seen it, it is not on the list. Where would you put this movie, ignoring all the praises that I told you about in the first section of of this review? I mean, the praise are not going to influence my decision, but isn't it your turn to... That is true, it is my turn. And I have to mention that it actually influenced my decision a lot. Oh, yeah? I mean, I'm trying not to, I'm trying to, like, put it behind me. But before I I heard everything that the internet had to say about this movie, I already had a a very good idea of where to put it. But then when when I read all of that information, I started reconsidering it, like, huh, I don't know. So I'm going to try to go with my first... Feeling? Feeling. And I would put it at number four. Which is below... Which is below The Gay Divorcee. Because in my head, I was thinking, you know, it's a good comedy. But I feel like I still enjoy The Gay Divorcee more as a comedy. And it doesn't have, like, as deep of a story, obviously, as um, other movies that are above it, like um, Imitation of Life. And it's smart, it's a smart movie in terms of dialogue, but is it as smart as what is now at number one, The Thin Man? Like, I don't feel like it matches to that. Oh, no, it's uh, like, in my opinion, it doesn't match The Thin Man, and it's not as uh, poignant or memorable as Imitation of Life is. Now, the question is, 
the gay divorcee, is it below or above it? That's a hard one because in this case, you know, like we've been saying a lot, how oh, these movies are so different, how do you compare? These movies are very similar. The gay divorcee and uh, it happened one night? Yes. Yes. Down to like even the dynamic of, you know, the two main characters and the girl at first doesn't like the guy. and Yeah, that is that is true. So, but I don't know. To me, the gay divorcee, oh, I know how to convince you. It had songs. Yeah. More and better. <laughs> Um, it, it did have song. I felt like it was, mo- for me, it was more entertaining as a movie to watch. Mm-hmm. Like overall, because of the songs, because of the dynamic of the characters, because of like how the story unfolded and everything else, which is not to say that this movie was not entertaining. I really enjoyed it. I just enjoyed the other one better. Well, I'm kind of, you know, in between, but I have to go with the songs. So the gay divorcee uh, will stay at three, I guess, and then this will be four. Right. With the mention, though, and I would like to mention that, I see why this would have won back then, this movie. Yeah? Yes. I would have given it to one or two if I was a a voter of the Academy in 1934, which... (laughs) <laughs> would, I mean, obviously, would not be we, the case. obviously, we have another another uh, ranking right now. But yeah. what I mean is that I see why this movie would have won back then. I feel like, you know, if you detach yourself from the present time and you think this movie is at the origin of a lot of the com- com- uh, romantic comedy tropes, then back then, that was a revolution. Right, that was also something so, to be taken into consideration. Yeah. Then you understand why they would give it the, the award. Back then, it won... Today, on our list, it stands at number four. So let us take a look at what our ranking of the 1934 Academy Awards Best Picture nominees look like. At number 11, Here Comes the Navy. At number 10, One Night of Love. At number 9, Flirtation Walk. At number 8, Viva Via. At number 7, Cleopatra. At number 6, The House of Rothschild. At number five, The Barrett of Impulse Street. At number four, It Happened One Night. At number three, The Gay Divorcee. At number two, Imitation of Life. And at number one, The Thin Man. With the mention, once more, that uh, The White Parade is also one of the nominated movies of 1934, but we have not watched it. Yes. And therefore, it's not on the list. The only available copy is at UCLA, and so... Whenever we get to UCLA, we will watch it. Right. But until then, we do not consider this year to actually be Done, completed. Because there is one, one movie. movie that we can watch, just not right now. Mm-hmm. So whenever we watch that, we will also... We'll come back and do a review. Right. But for now, we'll move on to 1935. Right. So that is it. One more year done. That was a long year. It was, it was a good year overall. I think. Yeah, I feel like we've gotten better, but as you extend the number of nominees, you get more... uh, Yeah, you will (laughs) always... I I feel like you get those at the end Mm -hmm. that are kind of like, meh. This year was, for the most part, uh, really good. So I'm happy with that. But I mean, my issue is not so much that the majority of the movie weren't good, because the majority of the movies are good. It's that the ones that are bad are bad, you know? That is true. And so why are you even nominated? (laughs) That is true. Weren't there, weren't there any other ones like yeah. closer to those uh, those top ones? Mm-hmm. That's true. Well, that being said, this concludes our review of the 1934 movie It Happened One Night. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you want to watch other videos of ours. Don't forget that this channel is not just about watching and reviewing movies. It is a bucket list channel in which Rick and I try to accomplish the goals and dreams that are on our bucket list. And they include a lot of different activities like traveling, learning new things, cooking, self-growth. So yeah, subscribe to not miss all of those and to join us in our journey. Once again, thank you so much for watching and have a nice day. Bye. Mind if I tried? You. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're such a smart Alex.